Hi everyone, this is Sam from Rococo, and I am beyond excited to announce the release of our Cinema 4D live streaming plugin. With this plugin, you can stream full performance motion capture, including body, hands, and face directly into Cinema 4D. Let's jump into it and take a look. So to use the Rococo plugin, you need to be working in Cinema 4D R23 or higher. You can download the plugin by following the link in the description below, and then install the plugin by going to Edit Preferences and opening up the Preferences folder. The Rococo plugin then goes in the Plugins folder. Once you put it in there, you can restart Cinema 4D, and you should find the plugin under the Extensions menu. Now that the plugin is installed, let's take a look at it. If we open it up, we are greeted with these six tabs. Connection shows the port information that the plugin is going to be using to connect to Rococo Studio. You can hit edit to change this information. Global clips shows save clips that can be recorded with the plugin, and project clips shows clips that have been saved directly within this specific project. Tags organizes the different tags used to drive characters in the scene. We currently don't have any characters, but we can set up a demo project by clicking the plus and then selecting Create Rococo Newton Character with Face. You can see on this character we have Rococo tags already applied. You can find these tags just by right clicking. Then we have the player, which initiates the connection to Rococo Studio. And finally, the command API with which you can control Rococo Studio directly from within the plugin. If we hop into Rococo Studio, we can now enable live streaming by going to Start Live Stream and then turning on the Cinema 4D module. You can also click this gear icon to find the port information we'll be streaming to. We'll just hit play on this animation and then hop back into cinema. And we can now connect to Rococo Studio by hitting connect. We'll then see our active suits, gloves, or facial motion capture, all of which we have in the animation that we're playing right now in Rococo Studio. If we go down to tags, we can assign our tags to be driven by the active studio connection. And then if we hit start player, there we go. We are now streaming motion capture live from Rococo Studio directly into Cinema 4D. The ascending number here is just counting the frames since we hit start player and you can generally just ignore this number. Also this animate document checkbox down here if you check it, it means that Cinema 4D will start advancing the playhead when we hit Start Player. Okay, let's pause this and take a look at the actual tags that are applied to our character. For our skeleton, you can see that we have an actor tag. And on our actual character geometry, we have a face tag. You can also set the tag to prop for props that you might have in Rococo Studio for virtual production. Down below here, you can see that we have a bone list that is populated automatically when you add the tag or if you click auto detect rig. This list can also be adjusted manually if the list is incorrect when it automatically populates. You can also save this list by hitting save preset, and then you can load saved bone lists later. Hip height should also be filled in automatically, and additionally, you can enter zero in here if you want to lock the hips in place. This will kind of mimic the treadmill mode in Rococo Studio. If we click the face, you can see something similar, except that these assignments are for the blend shapes on our character. Again, you can change these manually by typing in the fields if needed. So we can also create a recording directly from this data that's coming in from Studio. 
If we hit start recording and let the mocap run for a little bit, we can actually create a clip from this mocap data. When you hit stop recording, we'll get a prompt that allows us to save what we just recorded. So here we have some of the really interesting options. Firstly, we can determine where we want our clip to start and end by adjusting the first frame and last frame sliders. Then down here under bake keyframes, timing has the options studio time or by frame. Usually you will just want to leave this as studio time, which will give you playback based on the data coming from studio, but taking into account the frame rate of your project. In other words, this represents real-time playback. By frame ignores any frame rate data and just records the motion per keyframe one-to-one -one in cinema. Skip frames here is one of my favorite new features. It essentially allows you to do keyframe reduction. That means that you can just record every other keyframe or every other third keyframe or fourth. Sometimes this can give you a more animated effect to your mocap where things are much smoother than an actual human being's motion might be. The length dropdown determines whether or not the recording will extend beyond the current timeline of your project or not. And then down here we have these checkboxes. When you bake keyframes to your character, our plugin makes use of the take system from Cinema 4D. We can leave these as they are for now, and I'll show you what happens when we actually bake something out in a bit. Finally, you can save this recording as a clip that other Rococo tags can access even though they aren't baked with this data. Let's save a global click and just call it test. You can later again load these clips into your character instead of loading in the live stream. And now we can bake this animation. Bake keyframes at zero essentially means your baking will start on frame zero, but you could also bake it at a current keyframe in the timeline. Once you've baked the keyframes, again, you should see a pop-up confirming everything worked. Okay, so we've baked these keyframes to our character, but if I select the hips, we don't actually see anything recorded. That's because we're still in the original take in our project. If we go to takes, you can see that we have a new take here called test that we can select. If we select it and go back to objects, we can see now that our hips have baked keyframes. Now, if we disconnect from the live stream from studio, we have a fully animated character. It should also be noted that if you ever bake these keyframes and then you seem to get a result that is in slow motion, make sure that you unclick all frames. This will correct the playback. So obviously this setup allows for some exciting possibilities. For example, you could record some mocap to one character and then you could act against that recording for your second character. So that's the demo scene, but let's set up a character from scratch now. I will open up a new project and then import a character that is equipped with the standard 52 Apple AR kit blend shapes for facial capture. I'm going to be setting up for Coco's Bruno the Mime character, which you can download for free in the description below. Any character you use should be in a T-pose like this character, and ideally you want your hands and thumbs of the character posed like this for the best results. Okay, now that we have the character and we investigate it a little bit, you can see that our skeleton is placed within a null or folder or group. If your character's skeleton isn't in a null and it just starts at the hips, like a lot of Mixamo skeletons do, for instance, we recommend placing that skeleton in a null before applying the Rococo tag. You probably don't want to use the Alt-G shortcut to create that null, however. Create a new clean null whose origin is at 0, 0 that you can put the skeleton into. Right click on the null and then apply our Rococo tag. You can see that it automatically fills in the bone list and the hip height. Now right click on the geometry of our character with the facial blend shapes and apply another Rococo tag. 
Again, the list of blend shapes should automatically populate. Now we can open up our plugin manager. If we hop into Rococo Studio, I'm already in my SmartSuit Pro and Smart Gloves, and now I'll connect my iPhone 10 for facial capture. Again, we have a lot of tutorials about how to set up this hardware that you can check out on our YouTube. Once that's done, I'll confirm that I am live streaming. And then I will jump back into cinema. Now if we connect, and we hit start player, you can see that we are broadcasting our motion capture live from Rococo Studio directly into Cinema 4D. So we have a few more tutorials coming out soon about this live streaming system, and you can also go check out our new other tutorial about retargeting motion capture animations that you may have exported from Rococo Studio. This plugin is very new, so we'll be releasing updates as we continue to improve it. If you have any questions or issues, please post them in the comments below or reach out to us directly at support at rococo.com. You can also find all the documentation for this plugin in the links in the description below. Thanks so much everyone, have fun mocapping out there.